Welcome back to day five of our 14 day crash course. Again, this course is just to give you a bird's eye view of who we are and what we do and what makes us different. And if you like it, you can always click on another button on the screen that says, hey, I wanna set up a meeting with Matt. I wanna learn more about it. I wanna dive in. I'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation, dive into the pricing and all those other elements that come with it. But today I wanna dive into the online survey and how it works. So as mentioned earlier, we created a 177 question online marriage health assessment. It's digital, it's pretty easy to use, and I want you to know that I believe in marriage assessments. Right now, I know of a few other organizations that can offer a marriage health assessment. You have Symbus, you have Prepare and Rich, you have one uh, that's from a, an organization called Focus, F-O-C-C-U-S, and there might be others out there. Before I go into the detail of our assessment, I want to be really clear. It's my opinion that the power in marriage mentoring is not found in the assessment. It's not found in the bells and the whistles of the assessment. The power of marriage mentoring is found in the, the Word of God. It's found in the Holy Spirit, and here it is. The power is found in what you do with the results of the assessment. The results. Of, so once I get the assessment of a couple's marriage and I see where all their issues are, doesn't really matter how fancy the assessment was. It's what I do now that really matters. The second thing I want you to know, after I've been trained and certified on many other assessments, and now I've created one, is that we're all basically asking the same questions in an assessment. Let me explain. If you were to sit down and say, well, I'm going to take on a married couple or a premarital couple, I'm going to write down 200 questions that I'd like to ask them. Well, there's only so many questions you can ask a couple. And after I started looking at preparing riches questions and focus questions and our questions and Simba's questions, I started to see a lot of duplicates, like we're all asking similar questions. Nobody trademarks or owns the rights to a question, so we're all allowed to ask questions. What separates all of us is what we do with the results of the assessment, that's one thing that separates us, and maybe it's the fancy bells and whistles of the assessment. I decided to build an assessment looking at four key elements and I worked with a college, a Christian college, an expert, if you will, in assessments for people and for couples. And we find that when you create an assessment, you certainly want to draft up your questions. We did that. We want to make sure that there is a certain amount of redundancy. That means you want to ask a question maybe two different times in a different way to validate that they're answering honestly. And so not every question has a duplicate, but we have a certain amount of redundancy built into our assessment. We did that. The third element is they want us to ask the questions randomly. And that means out of 177 questions, they're all spread out random. And the software says, okay, when they're done answering the questions, the software is gonna pull those questions out and it's going to categorize them in a way that's organized so that when you mentor them and you tackle their issues, you're going to take on these categories. The reason that we do that is because we want to make sure that they're not preconceiving what categories we're in and just answering in a way that's not accurate. So it's a randomly asked assessment and the software categorizes it automatically. The fourth element is they wanted us to ask questions that are direct acting and reverse acting or maybe indirect acting. What does that mean? If I were to ask you this question or you were to answer this statement, agree or disagree, and we were looking for you to answer it in a way that said, I agree. So let me give you an example. The statement is, I'm happy with the way my spouse punishes our children. You put agree. 
Agree is a positive answer to the statement or the question. That's okay. That's the answer that we're looking for. You both agree. Well, it's important that not every single question in an assessment is looking for a positive response. Some of the responses we want to be reversed so that it makes you think through the question and you, you're not like a robot where you just check, 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 check. Using the same question asked in a reverse order, I would say this. I'm concerned about the way my spouse punishes our children. If you circle disagree, that's a negative answer, but it's the right answer. The statement is, I'm concerned about my spouse's method of punishment. You're like, I disagree. I'm not concerned. So it's a negative answer to the statement, but it's the one we're looking for. You're not concerned. So our survey has both negative acting questions and positive acting questions. You have to read them carefully and slowly, and it forces people to be honest and to slow down and answer the questions. So this isn't just tic-tac-toe, fly through it, and try to figure out maybe what the author of the questions is trying to get at. Now, can somebody lie? Yes. Can somebody still uh, figure out maybe what answers we're looking for? Of course they can. And our hope and our observation is doing this for years, most people, by the time they get to the place where they're filling this out, there is a level of honesty and there's a level of vulnerability that's already there. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't even be in the sessions. So our assessment then takes all that data, puts it into a one-page overview so you can see the health of that couple. And you're going to see all these categories from communication, problem solving. It also has family, in-laws, friends, hobbies, faith, sex, money, communication, and so on. 100%, which is a, a percentile, which is found to the right of each category, kind of shares with you how healthy they are. If a couple scored a 100%, that means they're 100% healthy in that category. They answered every question in that category correctly, both of them. And if that's the case, great, and it happens. But if for some reason half the questions got flagged because of one or both of their answers, that means we're going to now address, we're going to round the bases, if you will, with every question where there's a concern. If the male has the concern, we're going to round the bases on it. If the female has the concern only, we're going to round the bases on it. If they both have the concern, we're going to round the bases on it. We're going to mediate biblically, and then we're going to teach biblically, and then we're going to confront biblically. And there it is. You see, the assessment is a powerful tool that saves a lot of time. So you're not chasing rabbits, and you're not letting them control the agenda. You control the agenda. You always start mentoring in the category of communication, and then you take on the worst score, and you work your way up on the categories, but you stay within a category until you're all done addressing the issues that the software revealed. So let me be clear once more. Our assessment gives you 100% clarity as to what issues you're going to be tackling every single session. However, the power is found in mediating with that couple and bringing in the scripture and teaching organically and confronting their hearts in the right way, in the right time, in the right week. That's it. So the assessment is nothing more than a tool. Yes, we're gonna teach cognitive skills, we're going to bring in some teaching tools. We've got some extra things to show you. But the power is found in your ability to integrate the Word of God, is to let the Holy Spirit guide you, is to build rapport with them, to get into their heart, to confront what's there, to get them to a place of forgiveness and repentance and healing. That's where the power is. So that wraps up this segment on our online survey, what it is, how to use it. I look forward to seeing you in our next segment where we're going to go even deeper on biblical 
mediation. I look forward to seeing you soon.